in a real sense, people are making a lot of money today in certain stocks. And while they're fearful of what might be coming ahead with the the grim data you referenced, they also have, you know, FOMO is starting to come back of like, but but my idiot friend is making a ton of money right now. Why am I missing out on that party? So I just, I wonder if you could sort of speak to this, this very schizophrenic time that we're in right now. Yeah, the headlines do not seem recessionary, really. And uh, well, well, one thing we could say about the stock market, two things really. One is NVIDIA is a serious short candidate right now. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm really tempted. Um, and the other is that market breadth, which is, you know, how are the average stocks doing, not just the, the handful of great stocks, is the, uh, the worst it's ever been just about. Um, the, there are just this tiny handful of stocks pulling the rest of the, uh, the broad market averages up. And historically, that's the end of a cycle. You know, when, you, when breath gets narrower and narrower and narrow, narrower, eventually a few of those stocks, a few of the, um, the, the stocks that are doing great, stop doing great in part because they're just overvalued, you know, they roll over and then that pulls everything else down. And then you get that bear market that coincides with a recession. So this is normal. It's normal for market breadth to contract and a, a few stocks to do great right at the end of the cycle. Um, hey, can I just interrupt it? In, sure. in, so you say this is a, a, story, a cyclical story we see, right? We're at the end of the cycle, uh, market breadth continues to narrow until it's just in a few stocks and then they they tumble and then everything goes into the corrective phase it sort of sounds a lot like um you know the ship the sinking ship at sea right where um you know the the nose of the ship goes under the water but but the stern is actually rising and everybody rushes up into the stern of course because it's above water um and even though the stern is rising yeah for a brief period of time you know it's 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 still going up but then eventually it slips under the water like everything else before it did. And it brings all the people that got concentrated up in there down with it when it finally goes under. Is that an apt analogy? Oh, that's a good visual <laughs> for something that's a, a, a non-visual phenomenon. But yeah, that's uh, that, that's basically how it works. And I, you know, I think the override, I mean, we can go through some specific indicators of imminent trouble, but I think the biggest thing to pay attention to now is the money supply. We are shrinking the M2 money supply at least. Uh, for the first time, uh, for as far back as a lot of the charts go, you know, we we just don't normally have a shrinking money supply in a fiat currency system because a fiat currency system is basically a Ponzi scheme. Right? It, it means must grow. New money. Yeah, the money supply has to grow to cover all the interest that has to be paid off. You know, interest charges go up along with debt year after year after year. You need more money coming in to pay those off. Um, when the money supply starts to shrink, that means a growing number of people out there can't get the new credit in order to cover their interest costs, and they start to go bust. And, and that's how a Ponzi scheme finally blows up. When, when the new money coming in is inadequate to cover the, uh, the payouts to the existing investors. Well, we've got that going on right now. And unless the money supply were start, would start to increase dramatically from here, there's no alternative but to a lot of different over leveraged entities blowing up in the not too distant future. And there, there's nothing happening to make the money supply go up now. Interest rates are still rising. Um, the Fed is still um, shrinking its balance sheet. So, so we're still in quantitative tightening, which means the money supply is going to continue to decrease, which means lots of people are going to blow up here pretty soon. Um, you know, this economy is full of financial zombies, whether they're individuals or corporations or even some governments, um, and they're just not going to be able to make their payments at some point in the future. So leaving everything else aside, what stocks are doing, what the housing market is doing, what car prices are doing, um, a shrinking money supply in a fiat currency system means big trouble out there. So that's almost all we have to look at to know that uh, at some point, something really big has to change. Either the Fed has to start flooding the system with money again, or um, we get you know that little mini banking crisis we had just lately um, on steroids, just writ large. And the insurance companies and the pension funds and the rest of the banks all start feeling the effects of not enough money and uh, seeing their balance sheets 
um, blow up in one way or another and having to report horrible numbers and having people pull their money out because of that. Um, that's the kind of thing that is virtually guaranteed unless we make some big change here. And there's apparently no big change coming, especially with today's in, um, inflation number. You know, that makes it almost impossible for the Fed to cut interest rates anytime soon. And it makes it really hard for them to even stop increasing rates. So that's the, the really, really macro meta um, view of what's going on right now. And that's almost all you need because you know that that it, mathematically is going to cause a big problem in the not too distant future. All right. So um, I follow that logic completely. Um, a conversation that we've had on the site on this channel relatively you know, of late is uh, that all makes sense. So like, where are the defaults? Right. You know, you um, we, we jacked up interest rates faster and, and by a greater magnitude than we ever have before in history, um, at least within the, the short period of time in which we've jacked them up. And um, uh, uh, you know, we've had uh, mortgage rates double. Um, we, we, we all know that the system we have right now got accustomed, we, one could easily argue addicted to kind of a ZERP world, right? Um, and yet, Yes, we had a correction last year, but like I said, markets are up against this year. Um, there's a lot of people who are saying, yeah, everyone keeps telling me the housing market's going to correct. But in my area, it, you know, prices are not come down. There's still bidding wars. Um, so there's this and we in the press, we now have a huge debate over, you know, hey, it might not be a hard landing if we have a recession. There's more voices coming out for a soft landing or even no landing. Right. People are arguing that we're going to be able to somehow skate by without going into recession. Um, you know, showing my my cards for a moment, you know, I personally ascribe to what you're saying there, John, but I understand uh, that some people are asking the, hey, it hasn't happened yet. And if you had told me a year ago that you were, the Fed was going to increase the Fed funds rate by more than 500 basis points and we were going to double mortgages and, you know, do QT and all this stuff and we're going to have a banking crisis thrown in and all that stuff. I would have thought, you know, stock price, stock market would have had another correction. Housing would be down way more than it is. But but these things haven't happened. And I'm guessing you're going to say, yeah, they haven't happened yet. But why is it taking so long? Well, that that might be the the single biggest question uh, of most people's lives, right? <laughs> why hasn't this happened yet? It should happen. And and that's yeah. that is kind of how life works. If you, usually, if it's something you really want, it takes a lot longer than it ought to to happen. Um, and, you know, for people who don't want a stock a stock market crash and a recession, um, you know, they, it could go on forever and just be fine. Um, but for the people who are watching for it, because we think based on past experience and, you know, the numbers as they are right now, that it should be happening and it's not happening, it's frustrating. But, you know, I can, I can tell you that it's always been this way. At the peak of every cycle, um, especially now that we're firmly in bubble territory here, um, things that should happen don't happen for a really long time. Like um, just one example, um, back in the 1990s, I was a tech stock columnist for a uh, uh, online magazine called thestreet.com. And I was kind of, a, you know, by 1998, I was kind of the, the resident bear. And uh, so I used to get horrible hate mail from all the, the tech stock bubble guys. And everything, but by '98, it should have that bubble should have burst. All the numbers were crazy, and and there was no reason for it to keep going on. But it did. It went through 1999, and then through part of 2000 before it finally did blow up. Um, this is like that, you know. This is uh, something that should be happening. There's a lot of stuff in the background that kind of implies that it's going to happen soon, but it's not happening yet. But um, life is that way. It just takes longer than it should for a lot of things to happen. Um, and, you know, let's go through some stats that kind of imply that it will happen pretty soon, because um, that's what I tend to look at. And uh, I come away whenever I dig into the, the stuff that's behind the scenes. Um, it, it seems clear that we are headed into some kind of a recession, if not something much worse. But, you know, whether it's much worse depends on how governments respond to it. And uh, there's no clear you know, way to know how they're going to respond to the next thing when it happens, because they're so spooked by inflation right now. But anyhow, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it, you know, the, the short answer is that uh, what should happen eventually does happen. 
just not always on the um, in, in the time frame that we think is logical and wish for. And this is just one of those times. 